Living through a traumatic childhood takes extraordinary survival skills. You shut down, you act tough, you dance around to make other people feel happy, even when it means losing yourself. And sometimes the pain of all you've been through doesn't show up until after the trauma ends. And in this video, I respond to a letter from a woman I'll call Freddie, who is reckoning with a lifetime of abuse that has now affected her children, and it's got her very emotionally dysregulated. And she writes, Dear Anna, for most of my life, up until I was in my early 40s, I was a very docile and calm person. Even when I felt extremely sad or anxious, I rarely let it show. But now I find myself having extreme meltdowns and experiencing intense emotions. I guess the correct word for this is dysregulated, but I didn't know that before now it seemed like when I met my husband about 10 years ago, I went into an emotional crisis that I have not been able to come out of. All right, I've got the fairy pencil. I'm going to circle things I want to come back to on a second reading. But right now I'm going to read through so we can hear what Freddie's going through. It's a little bit longer than usual. It's a little bit rougher than usual. So get ready. Uh, a couple of years ago, my relationship with my 35-year-old son took a sour turn when he began telling me he's never felt loved by me and nor that he's able to have a deep connection to me. He told me that my poor life choices ruined his childhood and that he has struggled with deep anxiety and depression as a result of it. This was shocking to me as I thought I had given him a pretty good childhood. All this has pushed me to try to understand myself better and to look for ways to heal because I can't help my son if I'm still broken. You also get to help yourself, Freddie. Your healing is very good. Okay. From my earliest mo memories, I've never felt like I belonged, not even with my own family. I've always struggled to make connections with people, even those closest to me. You fit right in with us. <laughs> I've never heard of childhood PTSD, but the minute I heard you say it, I thought, that's it. I actually had been watching YouTube videos about topics like Asperger's, narcissism, bipolar, trying to gain some kind of understanding of my life when your videos popped up. I'm the youngest of four kids, and my mom and dad were both alcoholics. My mom has been married over 10 times, and so I never actually lived with my dad. Growing up, I was told that my siblings belonged to my mom's first husband, so they were more legitimate than I was. My father was her third husband. I never had any relationship at all with his parents or any of his relatives. My mom named me after my dad, so I have a masculine name, Freddie. She sent me by myself to visit with my dad every Sunday that she could. During those visits, he would literally say things like, go home, and I don't want to see you. He would sometimes get up and leave when he saw me coming. Oh my God. He would often tell me that I was just like my no good whore mother and accuse me of trying to wheedle money from him. Sometimes I would ask him why he didn't love me and feeling bad, I guess, he would say he loved all children, but that to him, this love was the same that he has for siblings or for any neighborhood child. Then, when I was around nine years old, he started telling me that I was not his biological child and that I needed to go home and talk to my mother about it. A few years ago, I took one of the DNA tests and found out that my biological father is actually my mom's first husband, who died when he was just 42 and I was six. One of the things that I've struggled with the most is what happened when he passed. My mother had the older three kids gather around him on his deathbed to say goodbye while I was told to stand back out of the way because he wasn't my father. Well, it turns out he actually was my father and my mother knew it. Wow. I'm just going to comment on that right now before we come back through. You know, clearly she had an affair on, with, against her second husband with her first husband, and she was trying to keep a lie going the whole time, but she just carried that lie all the way to where nobody, none of the men bothered you. That's terrible. I'm so sorry that happened to you and that she would do that to you. The worst thing about my childhood was that my mom would disappear on us and from the time I was an infant she would take us all with her to visit a friend or family member and while there she would say that she was going to run to the store for cigarettes or soda but she wouldn't return to get us for days or even weeks. Oh wow. 
Oh my goodness, that's serious. That is, that's a really big thing. That points to very serious problems with her. So you said, I can imagine how frustrating this was for the people we were left with, but they took it out on us. We weren't supposed to have needs like hunger or injury or illness, and we were told we were taking food out of their kids' mouths. We were usually told not to touch anything that belonged to them or their kids, and we were always lectured about how angry they were at our mom for dumping us off on them. Oh, you poor thing. That's terrible. Sometimes we were left at our grandparents, but even then we were a burden and riffraff. They called you riffraff? I hope you weren't tainted, you know, painted with that brush that they felt towards your mom. Because riffraff, whatever it means, is somebody dumping their kids and just splitting for a long time. Because, I mean, what was she doing all that time? Running off with a man or something? That's in, in other cases I know about. A little bit in my own family, I'm afraid. That's what it was. It was a man. I don't know. I always had a touchy relationship with my mom because she would draw me close and then backstab me. What I mean by that is she would she would sh show love, shower love and attention on me, and as I got older, act as a best friend to me, and then she would humiliate me at family gatherings by repeating stupid things I had said and done. She liked to tell people I had a sexual deformity and would tell me to pull down my pants and show everyone. Oh my goodness. I, there really isn't a strong enough word to describe what is wrong with somebody who does that to a child. Oh, I'm just stunned. That's terrible. Okay. A couple of other things worth noting here is that there was also a great deal of sexual and physical abuse in my family. I am not surprised, which I witnessed, but fortunately didn't experience, actually experience. Well, witnessing is enough to traumatize a person a great deal. And I never had any friends when I was growing up. I had a very lonely childhood, even though I had siblings. Something happened to me when I was 14 years old that I'm only now just beginning to see in a different light. An older boy in town began coming over to see me and asking me out. I had never had a boyfriend, and frankly, I didn't like this boy at all. I tried to tell him no repeatedly, but then he would park outside my house and watch for me to come out. I'm not sure why, but I went with him one day for a car ride and he insisted on having sex. I was a virgin. I tried to tell him no, but for some reason I thought I didn't have the right to refuse him. Isn't that just what happens? Isn't that just what happens to kids who haven't been cared for, to kids who have been exposed to sexually off behavior in the house and abuse? That's what happens. You don't even know. Who would have told you you have a right? You didn't have any rights, did you? Yeah, you were made to feel guilty for needing food, my goodness. So he came to pick me up regularly, you say, at my house for car, ri car rides. And I felt forced into a sexual relationship that I didn't want. I tried to talk my to my mom and ask for her help with this awful predicament, but she was no help at all. She just said she would get me birth control. Wow. And then the bomb that shattered my entire life hit. My mom told me I had to move out. I was devastated. What was that about? Was it about a man in her life? Hmm. I panicked because I didn't know where to go. It's too much to explain here, but I didn't have a family member I could go to, so my boyfriend said he would marry me. Oh, God. My mom was thrilled with this situation, this solution, because it was basically a way for her to never have responsibility for me again. I agreed to it even though I didn't want to. I believed I had to. So I was whisked away to the courthouse, and you probably can guess what happened from there. My husband turned out to be a drug addict. He abused me in ways that would take pages to explain, but I'll try to give you an idea. He didn't allow me to finish school because I might find a boyfriend. He didn't allow me to have any more contact with my family. He didn't allow me to leave the house without his permission even to go into the yard. He would lock me in the house for days at a time and then come home at some random hour and force himself on me. My husband would literally tell me to obey him in all things, and I did. I had our first child close to my 16th birthday. That's how young you were for all this? I did not have the support of any kind from any, from any single person. My baby was not allowed to have a bed, diapers, or other needed items. During my second pregnancy, I was not allowed to go to the doctor and had to put my newborn baby in a cardboard box on the floor. 
the thing that I can't make my son understand is that I stayed in this relationship for him and his brother. Okay, so that was where we started in this letter is that he said he has chronic anxiety and depression and he has never felt, he feels that your life choices have affected him very negatively. All right, I right now I totally understand each of you and we're going to come back to that. I knew how hard it was to grow up without a dad and I didn't want that for my kids. I was uneducated and cowed down with abuse and did not have anyone to turn to and sadly this was my life for 10 years until my mom finally agreed to help me get out. Yeah, you needed you needed a mom all this time. This never should have happened to you. And you needed a dad who would come in and knock that guy to the next solar system for treating you this way. That is such grave abuse, my goodness. When I, he left, I went back to school because I didn't know how I was going to raise my children on my own. You left, you good girl, you left. And here's the dumb thing, even though we were divorced, I obeyed my ex-husband when he told me what career I had to pursue. No, you're not dumb, you're not dumb. You, you never had the opportunity to develop your faculties of figuring stuff like that out. You, I mean, you were, you were, you raised yourself, so. So I went to college, got a good job, bought a house, but you bought a house, my gosh, you're amazing. And set myself to being the mother I thought my kids needed. And along the way, I met an older man who was very good to us. I wasn't in love with him, but I didn't actually believe there was such a thing. I thought of marriage as being a love that would grow over time. That's possible. I did love his values and his personality, but I didn't want to marry him and had refused him several times. Finally, he told me we were through unless I married him. I had become very close to my mother during this time, and she told me to marry the guy. Your mom with infinite great advice about relationships. Sorry, I'm not making fun of you. I'm just mad at her. I'm not sure why I listened to her, except that she had become my best friend, which is also totally sus about her. Okay. Unfortunately, over the years, my husband became more and more hateful and mean to my kids and to me. And this is what my oldest son is angry with me about. I didn't protect him from his dad who beat his butt all the time. And I didn't protect him from my second husband who was often surly and rude. And then one day I came home and my husband was gone and I never heard from him again. What a hard road, darling. That's just really hard. But also your son, yeah, he, was, he had his butt beat all the time and he was treated badly by his stepdad. So he, he has his experience that was painful. And so I understand where he's coming from. I can't understand this next part, Anna. When my husband left, my mom immediately changed her attitude towards me. We still spend a lot of time together, but she was never my best friend again. She's reverted to how she treated me in childhood, demeaning and hateful. I don't, yeah, very interesting, but hardly worth bothering yourself with. I think people in the comments may have experience with something like this. Like, I don't like to throw around the narcissism word, but there's something about how she um, treats you and suddenly you're her best friend. It's always about her, isn't it? It's not, it may be totally a coincidence about anything going on in your life, but also you getting free of a bad man. Well, maybe that threatens her too. She, you know, she's having trouble facing herself and well, she should. <laughs> So you said, I met my current husband about the time my divorce went through. I fell in love with him so hard and so deep. So this is the third guy. I can't even tell you. For the first time, I got married to the person I wanted to be with. But sometimes I get angry with him over something he has said or done. And his family doesn't like me at all. To this day, they're very cold towards me. Well, this brought up a lot of intense emotions that I didn't even know I had. I, I totally get it. Every time I have to see his family, I have an emotional breakdown, a complete and total senseless. It's not senseless. Maybe it doesn't relate to them exactly, but there, there's, I, ca I can't believe it took you so long to melt down and have a breakdown. It's so understandable, but I get it. This is not good. Okay, you've never seen anyone else have something this intense and you didn't even know it was possible. Sometimes I get furious and I erupt all over my husband with things I never could have thought I would think, let alone say. And sometimes I get so sad and upset that I wail with a bitterness that feels like it's coming from my soul. I love my husband so much and yet I'm sabotaging our relationship with my emotions. I'm thankful I found your channel. All right, Freddie. Um, so it's a life emergency right now. It's all coming to a head, isn't it? 
um, you didn't say whether you had ever received therapy for any of this. And this sounds like, like if the meltdown is so extreme that you can't help but damage good things in your life, then that is totally a reason to go get professional help. And someone you trust, someone who gets it, someone who's knowledgeable about childhood trauma and isn't going to just casually diagnose you. Yeah, I heard you were sort of fishing around on YouTube to see what's wrong. Is it autism? Is it bipolar? Um, well, I don't know, but I do certainly hear the symptoms of complex PTSD in there, which would absolutely make sense what you've been through. People who have been through a tenth what you've been through end up with CPTSD. So not everybody who's been through trauma gets it, but what you're describing is just like a total emotional dysregulation that doesn't feel related. It sounds like emotional flashbacks, which is a CPTSD thing. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a book called Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving by Pete Walker. And I want you to get online and order that book with fast delivery for yourself right now. He's an amazing guy. He has CPTSD and he's a therapist who figured it out. And this book describes what we go through. And he's very good at describing emotional flashbacks um, and abandonment melange. You were literally abandoned as a kid over and over and over again. And so, you know, when I introduced this video and when I was thinking about what I wanted to title it, I wanted to say that we've had, many of us have had this experience that we can hold it together through the hard times. It's when we're safe that we completely lose it. And on the one hand, that's understandable, but on the other hand, we could damage this good relationship. It's a relationship you treasure. So I want you just quickly get that book. And then also, if you can come take my daily practice course, it's free. It's always down in the description section. It's on my website, crappychildhoodfairy.com. And it's a, you can learn and try these techniques in an hour. There's also these FAQ videos. I lead free calls every week and it's genuinely free. You can come and it's a way that you can start to process feel feelings and thoughts that are yucky. And we're, you know, when you've been through trauma, that's basically, that's like the substance of what the trauma is in your consciousness. It's just like, oh, I'm so terrible. Oh, I can't stand it anymore. And I'm so sad. And oh, everybody's going to leave me. You know, this stuff is going round and round. And trauma literally injures our ability to process thoughts and feelings. So it is backed up in there. And this writing is a technique. There's a lot of science why writing works. Well, our technique is a very specific writing technique followed by a very simple meditation. Both things have a lot of science behind them of why they help a person who's struggling with the, the effects of trauma to release some of it, to release some of it. When you have less like jammed up in here, you have choices. You can start to make better decisions about, should I see a therapist? Which one? What can I afford? Um, do I want to take this free course? <laughs> do I want to talk to this person? Who can I trust? Is my relationship actually good? And then um, I, have, I have lots of materials on emotional dysregulation to share with you. And um, there's a whole chapter on it in my book that's coming out in October this year, 2024. And um, there's good stuff online. And I just want you to start learning about emotional dysregulation. You can search on my channel for videos. And um, you can also look at the CPTSD course, the childhood healing childhood PTSD course, and the dysregulation boot camp. Like everything I make is for people like you to start having a way to unpack what happened without without hurting our lives with it. There is a way to do it whether or not you have access to professional help. There's so much hope for you. You don't have to be defined by what happened to you um, anymore. Now I want to talk about your son and how he feels. I, I hear what he's saying and it sounds valid. His childhood sounds awful. And I, on, on the one hand, he, he does get to hold you responsible. You shouldn't have put him through it. On the other hand, you were literally, you know, a teenage, you were so young, you were 16 when you had him and you had gone from a totally abusive and neglectful household to a really, truly abusive marriage. And you were deprived of even being able to leave the house. So there's this funny way that he is not obliged to um, accept how terrible his childhood was because of the circumstances you were in. He is not, a, he, I, I'm sure as a 35 year old, he can have some understanding of it, but he's mad at you that you didn't leave. And not leaving is a, is a trauma symptom. 
and I understand it. And you are not alone as somebody who's been in an abusive relationship who had trouble conceiving of a way to leave. Eventually you did. And like so many people who have left abusive relationships, you ended up getting right back into one the first time. And somebody who abused your children verbally this time, at least just verbally, but that's enough. That's terrible. So as a human being, he is hurt and had a right to hope and wish that he could have been born into a family that had the means emotionally, materially, to protect him from people like that. But like you, he was not born into such a family. And he's going to have to do his own work to come to terms with that, that he has a mother who loves him. I think what would be helpful um, in terms of your children is you doing your own healing, because probably for you to have to compartmentalize this all these years, you probably had to stuff a lot of stuff down, not just your feelings and not just your pain, but your awareness of just how bad it was. So that would be like really invalidating for your kids. And when you're actually actively supported and in a, in a program of healing, or maybe like more than one thing, I'm going to really suggest 12 step meetings to you, the alcoholism, Al-Anon, this is a place where you can get lots of support. When you have lots of support, when every day you have people to call and see, and you know, you, you will have this tremendous strength start to grow in you to be able to handle facing what happened, facing the, what you did or didn't do, having compassion on yourself about why you couldn't do it until you could do it. It's very, you know, every, every way that you handled it is actually very normal for a person who was raised in an abnormal situation, but it still constitutes harm for your kids. So do you think you can hold those two things that you were, you were being harmed and so you couldn't protect your kids? You were trying to cope and raise the kids and care for them and get the college degree in the house and the job. You were trying to pull it together, but you were, you were, you were having trauma-driven decisions happening there. They were trauma-driven decisions. So compassion for him, compassion for yourself. And you're so not alone. So many people here on this channel have been through similar things and will understand. And we want to, this is your, your crisis here is, is a beautiful thing in your life that you now have a relationship worth saving. You have a reason to try and to strive and to get that support so that you can do your healing. People talk about like, oh, you need to heal your trauma. Like you just, there you go. I just was being stubborn before and wouldn't heal it. It's not like that, is it? Like, what do you even do? But I really invite you come into my program. We have a membership program where people can talk about this and teach each other and suggest, make suggestions. Well, this helped me and this helped me and we have tools. I think anywhere you go, whatever you decide for helping you, whether it's a, you know, therapy, 12 step, my thing, all of the above, the important two things you need are tools that help you sort of get to the heart of the matter and support to help you deal with the journey. Because as humans who have pain about this stuff, it's very common. Like if you had no support, you'd go diving in, you'd do some work, you'd hit a rough patch and you'd be like, I can't do this at all, you know? So you can stay with it with support and you can actually, there's a lot of like uh, blessings that come from the, the sometimes painful work of healing your own trauma that you you develop friendships you find like-minded people who understand as nobody else can I really wish that for you Freddie and for everybody when she said she had a masculine name I had to find one I never use real names so don't worry but I was trying to think of a name that's rare for women and common for men Freddie just FYI so the thing I want to leave you with is the free daily practice course. I encourage everybody here, you know, give this a try, give this a try and see if it can be a simple, no cost way. All you need is a pen and a pencil and a little bit of time to watch the videos and give it a try and see if you can get a little bit of emotional relief and mental cognitive relief from getting these thoughts on paper and following it with meditation. And it's a very specific technique. So it's not just like, don't just list a bunch of stuff learn the technique it, it matters the feeling the good feeling that you get of freedom afterwards matters very much that you're not just dumping it's following a technique that can be very helpful so i leave you with that link right here and i'll see all of you very soon